So I was uh, listening to uh, to Dean, Vinnie Corleone, 62. Dean Thompson, uh, his um, well, his vlog on uh, uh, the day that gaming died, uh, which is actually very. I mean, it's it's a dramatic title, uh, but for a dramatic subject, I think, and I just wanted to respond. I know that Dean feels very strongly about. Um, uh, about online gaming, um, uh, while he feels very strongly against it, I should say, uh, and seeing his, uh, uh, you know, his his passionate uh, a case that he made, uh, I I, uh, I have to say that I agree with him uh, on on many uh, on many levels, uh, and 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 there's a couple of things that uh, that sprang to mind. Uh, one of the things is that, that when I look at how I game, at the games I play, it's it's mostly retro um, and very little modern gaming. Um, and also, if I look at the gaming that I've done, uh, almost none of it has been online. Uh, and I and I I started me thinking on uh, uh, why why is that? Why don't I play online games? Uh, there's one game that I play online, and that's Elite Dangerous, and I, I see that uh, in a different light. Uh, but I'll, you know, I'll get back to that. Um, uh, but all I've, uh, I, I've always uh, avoided online gaming because gaming for me is something to get away from, uh, from, from everything and everyone, basically. Um, you know, I like the community. I like being in the community, um, but having it like you know on YouTube and Facebook, it's 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 sort of offline as well, which is comfortable in some cases. And gaming is something that I like to do uh, by myself. Uh, I also like to play games with others, uh, but I don't go to a crowded place to a to a. Uh, a place where there's a lot of anonymous users getting together to play a game. Now, the problem with people and being in anonymous situations is that they start misbehaving. Their own values and their own rules come into play and it's easy to let them go. It's the same uh, uh, reason why uh, uh, most of the car accidents happen uh, with young drivers. Why? Driving a car gives you mobility and it gives you a lot of power but it also gives you anonymity. How things would change if your car had your name on the outside for everyone to read, right? If you take away anonymity it's a different ball game but online gaming is all about anonymous. The worst, and uh, the worst one of the crazy things that I saw in in online gaming is in DayZ. I played that for a short while with uh, with Evo Halo with Giles. And sure, it's a, it's a game where it's uh, you know one man against the other or one team against the other, and and you, you the goal is to kill each other. But people have found ways of uh, taking other players hostage. And feeding them, you know, this is all virtual, you know, virtual uh, bleach so that the character in the game doesn't die, but he can't do anything. He just sits there and he's the captive of the... I don't get that. I don't get... It. That is where, um, where things get really ugly and that's what you get in online gaming. Things get really ugly. And... Uh, people uh, do things, and, and uh, sure, they're all virtual things, but uh, uh, they take no responsibility. And that's not an environment that I like being in, so that's why I've avoided online gaming. Um, Elite Dangerous is, is a little bit different, uh, because I can, uh, I can choose to be by myself. I can, I can choose uh, uh, like a, a solo environment, where I, I don't meet any other players. I, I meet NPCs, but that's that's uh, you know that's just the way it is. 
um, and that's fine, but I, uh, I, can, I can shut it off. Even with open play, which means that I can see other plays, I can go to a section of space where, the, where, where no one else is. So there is a form of online gaming that will allow me, or I say online gaming, but I, need, I mean a game that requires a server to be present and, and live and active, uh, but that allows me to, uh, to avoid others. So that's, I think, the other part of Dean's uh, uh, case was um, the availability. Now this ties in with uh, Grubgun and Katkin's question uh, on ownership, really, because uh, none of the games that we buy, be it uh, like, uh, you know, hard copy or download or whatever, but none of the games we buy we own, okay? So ownership doesn't exist. We just uh, get a license to use, basically. But this gives me the sense of availability and accessibility. I can play this game. I have access to it. And as long as I have access to it, I am fine. You know, I am at ease. I can pick up this game and play it whenever I can. Now, I can... I can buy uh, a boxed uh, Elite uh, game as well. It comes in a case and with a CD and it has the, you know, the client loader and whatever on it. Uh, but then it still requires the server to be there. And, and you know, that is the thing that makes me a little bit nervous, uh, is the availability. I want games to be available. The same with movies. Movies that I really like. I will buy, and I have in my closet, you know, uh, Blu-rays and stuff, uh, books, the same thing. All the content that I want to have, I buy a physical copy. Basically, I buy guaranteed access. A guaranteed quote, because, you know, a book can fade or fall apart. Uh, a, a CD uh, or, or a DVD may rot over the years, I don't know. So, but that's all within, you know, uh, the limits of acceptability. Basically, we want stuff to be available, and I, I, I feel bad for, for Dean because, you know, he's maybe a little bit more into modern gaming than I am. He's looked at five racing games that he really wanted to play, and all of them have turned out to be uh, server-based, which means that uh, when it's no longer popular, uh, uh, someone pulls the plug and the game is unplayable. That takes away the availability, and I, 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 that is a bad trend. That is a bad trend in the sense that I don't, I'm not used to having content, you know, uh, uh, being unable to uh, make the availability uh, uh, guaranteed. Maybe uh, young kids today, you know, they've grown up with games that they buy and they they put in on day one and they have to download updates and upgrades and and uh, they're used to that um, the the old games I, I can just pick one out you know if, if you ever if, if you bought a game like this which is a, a ZX Spectrum game Spectral Invaders whatever this is it no upgrades no updates you buy it it works that's what it does and there may be bugs in it um, uh, but not as many as the modern games nowadays Maybe kids are used to that, you know. Maybe in the near future, uh, when when gaming really changes into that, you you, you download a you know a smidgen of a game and uh, you, you update it and then play it for a year and and when it's out of season, uh, you go on to the next thing and forget it. And you know, if you ask me, I, I agree with Dean. That's not what I want. That's not what I uh, what would make me happy. But I don't want to become like a grumpy old man uh, who who lives only in the past. You know, I think what we what we've had until now is good. And you know, it's it's the retro community is proven to you know to be a growing community. So there's something. Good and then let's not forget that the entire gaming community uh, uh, owes its success to single-player games. You know, let's not forget where we came from. 
Now that doesn't mean that things uh, should never change. Uh, what I see happening is that, you know, the, 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 there are many examples of games out there now that require a server that run the risk of being unplayable uh, uh, after they unplug them. Will that be it? You know, will people keep going for that? Or is there something beyond the horizon, something that will allow players to keep on playing that? Some technology or some decision that we haven't seen yet. So I think we have to keep our eyes open uh, and not shut, uh, you know, the modern style gaming out just yet. Okay, you know, I'm not going to buy an Xbox One. I'm probably not going to buy a PS4 if it means that all the games are going to be server-based. And as long as that is the case, uh, that is the end of, of modern gaming for me as well. Uh, but I don't mind because I, I, I'm not so much about modern gaming. I'm more about retro gaming anyway. So, uh, it's, you know, it's not a big loss. Although, I really was uh, excited about No Man's Sky. Um, and I still am, you know, if it's, if it's like uh, Elite, uh, if, if I can go online and, or, or at least if I can, you know, play the game with or without uh, seeing others, then it's fine. As, as long as the server's there, you know, this, the server has to be, the game has to remain playable. If that doesn't happen, then, uh, then it is over. But there may be something beyond that, you know, th there may be a point where the company is saying, mm, you know, we're forgetting about uh, a, a large group of players who still want to play these games and uh, let's think of something. Or what about uh, the retro gaming community itself working with uh, the, um, uh, the game publishers and saying, okay, let us have the servers, let us control them, we'll take the money, we'll do the work, we'll make sure the servers are up. Just as like a you know a, a, a fan-based kind of Kickstarter thing. That might be an idea, just to keep gaming alive. Because I totally agree. I could I could pick out any one of these games and and you know this will all still work. You know as long as the hardware works, it'll all still work. And I and I want that experience as well. So Dean, I think you made a good point. Um, uh, just let's not shut things out completely you know there may be something else down the line that we haven't seen yet so let's let's hope for the best and plan for the worst <laughs> see you guys